Now, to the outside world, former pol politician Lebit Opik has always appeared confident and self-assured, often to be found with a beautiful woman on his arm. Very little was known about a terrifying accident that he was involved in nearly 20 years ago, an accident which left him in constant pain and with a facial disfigurement. Uh, he's been desperate to correct. So, last month, Lebit made the decision to undergo the first in a series of life-changing operations to correct what he terms the wonky jaw that had caused him so much physical and mental pain over the years. He joined us now to tell us more. Welcome to you. Um, first of all, can we talk <laughs> about this accident that happened? Because not many people knew about this. This mm. was in 98. You were 33 mm. years old. What happened to you? I was paragliding. I was uh, flying above my constituency as it happened, and something went wrong. Maybe I made a mistake. Long and the short of it was I fell about 30 yards, about 28 metres, and I broke my back in 12 places. <sighs> I smashed my ribs, my sternum, my jaw. But we didn't realise I'd smashed my jaw because I was that close to death. Right. So nothing was done about that. The Royal Shrewsbury Hospital put me together and then Gaboan Hospital, a back hospital. But about a week and a half later, this had set. And right. I'd always had a slightly wonky face. It made it a lot worse. And I've been living with that for 18 years. So it got, it's got worse over it, a period of time? Yes. Uh, my face was always a bit asymmetrical, to use the technical term. But the way it healed, it became, frankly, a nightmare. You were quite right. Constant pain, not able to eat properly. And my teeth were disintegrating because only two of them were actually meeting. And then seven years ago, some of the work just just broke completely, and I knew then there was no way out of having this big, yes, big you operation. You had to do something about it. So the, the 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 procedure that they suggested to you was to have this what, what's known as a reverse facelift, and this can have a, a, a huge difference. I mean, the the changes you look in the mirror. You see something completely different, yeah, don't you? To you, you might see a small amendment. To me, this is a different face. It's a stranger. And it sounds ridiculous, but we got counselling for it. Everybody gets this sort of operation, does. And it's 14 millimetres to the left. To the left, that's right, and 6 millimetres up. And they twisted it. They basically cut the bottom of my face off and put it back on again. Wow. And the x-rays look like Terminator, because it's all this... Uh, titanium, titanium in there inside. as well, but it was incredible. I mean, so let's amazing. look at yes, look at the. Uh, we can see um, the, uh, the the massive difference. It's it's extraordinary. Oh uh, yeah, it really is. Do you know what? I didn't overly notice <laughs> it to begin with. I know living with it for you, obviously with your teeth disintegrating and all that sort of stuff. But I didn't overly. It's only when you sit like that and you can see yeah. the difference. It's side by side when you really notice it. And my friends really notice it. I'm seeing my mum for the first time today, and I'm sure she'll notice it too. There's one more op to go but it feels so different. For the first time in my life, I got a straight face, mm. even though I did try to be a comedian at one point. Well, yeah. Yeah. You, uh, you joked, uh, joked that you wanted to come out looking like George Clooney, um, <laughs> but, um, but the, 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 so, well, we, uh, well, obviously it would be wrong not to put a side-by-side <laughs> picture of you. So look, he, he wants to separated look like at birth. He, he needs the operation, not me. <laughs> he needs to look like this. But this, and it was important that you wanted to stress, this was not a cosmetic surgery. It, it, it wasn't cosmetic, but the... At the St. Bartholomew's right in Whitechapel, they are amazing. This is NHS work. It wasn't for cosmetic reasons, but it does have a cosmetic benefit. I'm not going to lie, I've always been quite shy. You wouldn't think so, but I have been quite bashful and shy, partly because I knew my face was asymmetric. Now, it is life-changing. I can see the impact this can have for children who really just don't want to go out. The, the people at the hospital, Dr. Sharma, my consultant, said that this really can make or break a person's entire life. But the, um, uh, this, emotionally, for you, this has had an extraordinary effect as well. Um, it seemed to, like, everything seemed to come out. Once you mm. had had the procedure done, it's like you were holding on to something after the accident. That's absolutely true. The first thing that happened, there was a wonderful lady, recovery nurse, called Natalie Poole. When I came around, she was holding my hand, making sure I was all right. So lots of disgusting things happened as you're coming around in terms mm. of blood and so on. And I realised for 18 years I'd been living with that near-death accident. I remember how I felt at the time when my then-girlfriend Sam was sitting in just the same way she was. And I said to her I loved her, and I thought that might be the last thing I ever say to anybody. Right. So I'd carried 18 years of that near-death experience with me, and it did come out, and I cried. I cried my eyes out. And, you know, I feel more open emotionally now. Yeah. I don't know if I feel different Well, you different were very you, open but... with our team when they talked to you yeah. uh, about our chat today, because you said that although you're recovering, you're recovering on your own and you are lonely. I am. It's solitary. Uh, initially, I had great friends staying, looking after me and so on, but I've been on my own most nights. It's still sore. Mm. I can't move my face in certain ways when I'm asleep. Every morning I go through a long pain ritual. But, you know, it's given me space to think. I'm 50 now. I feel like I've been given a second life. Partly 
it is cosmetic, perhaps because I feel more confident about yeah. being symmetrical. Even if that sounds superficial, it's just the truth. I'm not going to lie about it. But also the fact that we've got a health system that can go to all of this trouble. This must cost tens of thousands of pounds. I can eat again mm -hmm. and I'll be able to eat solid food. Not yet, but in a few weeks' time. And I can also think about the future without constant pain in my face. Maybe the memory of the accident will change from something very raw to something about which I'm grateful. And another operation to come. Another operation to come and two more years of reconstruction. So it'll be half a decade in all. But you know what? I could have died on that mountain. Yeah. And I can't thank the NHS enough for putting me together then and restoring me now.